Hello, my name is David Meadows. I'm the inspections manager at the FireGuard Corporation. I'm here today at Progression Place Residential to go over the training session of the life safety systems involved with the fire sprinkler system. Currently, we are on the P1 garage level in the diesel fire pump room. Always important to know where your incoming supply, the incoming supply water from the city is coming through this connection right here and it follows this piping down into this connection right here. This connection right here is called your backflow preventer. The backflow preventer is required and has been required for years to be installed because once the water travels through this double check backflow preventer and enters into this piping, it becomes fire sprinkler water. Fire sprinkler water is non-potable water, not allowed to re-enter back into the usable water for normal use. So this is essentially a double check valve and what this does is it allows the fire sprinkler water to enter in this way. Once it gets to this point it can never travel back this way. Um, the backflow preventer is required to be um, checked, inspected annually, once a year, uh, to make sure that it is sealing tight and it's not allowing the water to go back. Um, in the uh, in the backflow uh, configuration, you have two control valves. These control valves are each very important control valves because the two control valves, if either one is put to the closed position, will shut off the entire fire sprinkler system to the building. So if this valve is closed or this valve is closed, there will be no fire sprinkler water for the residential side of Progression Place fire sprinkler system. Um, these valves are, as all sprinkler valves are, are indicating control valves, which means that you can walk into the room and you can look at any sprinkler control valve and you will know the position of the valve. Uh, these are OS and Y outside stem and yoke valves. The indicator on these is the brass stem. The threaded brass stem, when fully extended to this position it's currently in, is an open valve. As you operate this valve to the closed position, this brass stem will sink down into the valve. So if you were to walk in and try to figure out what valve was closed and this stem was barely sticking up out of here, you would immediately know that this valve is in the closed position. At the same time, all the fire sprinkler valves that control the system are electronically monitored by the fire alarm system. These red boxes that are attached on these valves tell you the position of the, uh, of the valve, there is a, a notch on the brass stem that a lever sits in. If the valve is operated, the lever on this switch will jump out of the notch on the stem and will send a signal to your fire alarm system notifying you that a valve has been uh, tampered with. These are called tamper switches. Um, so these two control valves are very important. Um, as we follow up and around and over, um, I'm going to talk really quick about this tank. This tank right here is the diesel fuel tank for the diesel fire pump. There is, um, there is a capacity on this that is measured by this gauge on the top of the, uh, top of the tank and currently it is at approximately three quarters full. This tank is to be maintained at no less than half. At no time should this tank level drop below half uh, of, the, uh, of the fuel indicator. If at that time it's ever noticed that it is below that, um, it should be refilled immediately. The next item, a uh, piece of equipment that I'm going to be discussing is the jockey pump. The jockey pump is a maintenance pump. What it does is it maintains the sprinkler system at a designated pressure above the start pressure of the fire pump. So the system pressure is maintained well above what the city supply water pressure maintains. It maintains the uh, system pressure on the fire sprinkler system at a certain designated pressure and it maintains it. If you have a 175 PSI system, it will maintain it at 175 to 165. At 165, all sprinkler systems lose pressure over time. When it drops down to 165, 
the jockey pump will come on and bump it back up to 175. It will go up and down like that. The jockey pump is in no way con uh, connected to the fire alarm system. It's a quiet piece of equipment that just operates and maintains the system. If for some reason the jockey pump was to fail to operate, then the fire pump would, would come on eventually because the system pressure would continue to drop. If in the case of a fire sprinkler activation, the jockey pump is specifically designed not to be able to maintain the system pressure with one sprinkler head activation. With one sprinkler head activation, the jockey pump will come on and try to maintain pressure, but it will continue to drop, and then the fire pump will come on. The jockey pump is maintained by this controller. This controller has a pressure switch inside. This line connects to the sprinkler system of the building and it monitors the system pressure. The system pressure is indicated here on this gauge and this senses the drop in pressure. When it drops down to the designated start point, this controller would then tell the jockey pump to operate and bring the pressure back up and it will just continue to do that through its life cycle. The next item that we're a piece of equipment we're gonna talk about is the actual fire pump itself. The fire pump is, is diesel driven but the fire pump itself, which is this entire unit here, is what actually raises the pressure on the, the city supply and raises it up to accommodate the pressure requirements for the high-rise building that it's maintaining the sprinkler system for. The fire pump itself is actually made up of the head, and inside this head is an impeller, which drives the water flow. On the outside, you'll notice that there are identical packing gland on each side. These actually compress in graphite packing, and this is the general operating fire pump. There is a maintenance requirement that is required for testing the fire pump on a regular basis, including an annual fire pump flow test to make sure that it is meeting the design requirements which are illustrated on this data plate for the fire pump itself. Since this fire pump is a diesel driven fire pump, as all diesel driven fire pumps are required, there is a main relief valve. If the fire pump diesel engine was to go into overspeed and start to create uh, significant pressure beyond what the sprinkler system is designed to handle, this main relief valve begins to open and begins to dump the system pressure through this valve. It provides a safety uh, net to prevent overcharging of the fire sprinkler system. It's the actual diesel engine that drives the fire pump. The diesel engine was of, is of course fueled by the tank that we discussed earlier. The diesel engine is specifically designed to drive the fire pump and produce the pressure. There is considerable maintenance that is involved with the diesel engine. Just like any engine, it needs to be maintained with proper oil changes, proper antifreeze check, and general operation of the fire pump diesel engine to verify that everything is operating properly. The diesel engine itself is controlled by the controller that we'll talk about next. So the diesel engine drives the fire pump, which provides the fire sprinkler system with its pressure requirements. This is the fire pump diesel engine controller. Diesel engine fire pump controller. This is the brains of the operation that determine when the diesel engine should operate to operate the fire pump for the building. When the jockey pump cannot maintain the, the system pressure, the diesel engine controller, which has a digital di display, has been programmed specifically to start at a designated pressure. And once it reaches that designated start pressure, the controller will activate and start the diesel engine, which will provide the fire pump its power to maintain the system pressure. Okay, currently we are on the second floor stair one of the residential side of the building. Um, what I'm gonna be discussing now is the actual sprinkler system uh, typical. Uh, this sprinkler uh, setup that I'm going to discuss with you now is going to be typical for the first floor through the ninth floor of the building. Uh, the only change is the penthouse. 
which is a little different. Um, but from first floor through ninth floor, this is typical, what I'm about to explain. The first thing that you, I'll note is the fire department hose valve. This is required to be here for fire department use. The fire department also requires that this not be locked or secured in any fashion, as you'll notice. There is a cap on here to prevent tampering, but this control valve and this hose valve is for the fire department to use in case of emergency on this floor. Um, then you move up the pipe and you move into the sprinkler system. This is the actual sprinkler system for the second floor. There is an identical sprinkler system just like this in stair two, uh, second floor. It looks just like this. And the way that it works is that this stand pipe feeds this sprinkler system. This is fire pump fed from the diesel fire pump that we had discussed earlier. This is the pressure it goes into the system this way. And it also comes from the stair to uh, system as well. So you have dual feed. So in stair one and in stair two, this system is identical feeding into the second floor. What you have is, is the first item you have is a control valve. As I discussed earlier, every sprinkler control valve is indicating. You can walk in and look at it. This is a butterfly indicator. When the butterfly indicator is in line with the pipe, it's in the open position. When the butterfly indicator is in this position, it is in the shut position. It also indicates open and shut on the valve itself. Once again, it's also monitored for position by the fire alarm system. There's internal switches inside here. When you start to activate this to the closed position and within two or three revolutions of this valve, you will send a tamper signal down to the fire control room and it should note specifically which valve has been uh, closed. Um, as we continue through, there is a check valve uh, on each sprinkler system. Um, this is designed to capture the pressure per floor. And as we go through, you go to the fire alarm, water flow alarm device. This device actually has a plastic paddle that sits down in this steel T and it sits in the waterway. As water flows, begins to flow through the system, it moves the plastic paddle, which then has a, uh, a stem that comes up into this device, which releases a set of contacts inside the actual red cap uh, that you see here. This is a fire alarm. If water flows, releases this device into alarm, the entire building will go into alarm and you should have fire department dispatch at that point. Um, as you continue through, you come to this connection. This is a maintenance connection. This provides that you can either move the handle on the back side, which you can't see, but there's one back here. There is a handle that will move either to the test position or the fully open drain condition. The uh, inspector's test position is a partial turn of this valve which opens up a pathway on the valve which allows the imitation of a sprinkler head activation. It's a, approximately a half inch orifice that opens up and allows water to flow into the express drain and this imitates a sprinkler head activation which is the way that you test the water flow alarm switch. If any time you need to work on the floor or you need to drain it down for any reason, you would continue to move the handle past the test position and into the open, fully open position, which would open it up to, I think this is three quarter, which would open it up to a complete three quarter uh, opening and would supply water down just to drain the system. In the, oh, I'll continue on to the last item, which is the pressure gauge. Essentially, this gauge tells you what the system pressure is for this floor only. Um, at this point, it continues in and feeds all the sprinklers on the uh, second floor. In the case of an emergency, in the case of an accidental sprinkler discharge or if something was to go wrong with the system or maintenance needs to be done, work needs to be performed on the system, you would operate this valve to the closed position you would then stop and you would then go over into the other stairwell, the other corresponding stairwell for this floor, and you would close this exact same control valve on the other side. 
At that point, you would then open up the drain in the other stairwell. You can then come back to this stairwell and open up this drain. If you only close this control valve on this floor, it is still being fed water from the other standpipe in the other stairwell and nothing has been accomplished with shutting down the system. You must shut this control valve, then you must go over into other corresponding stairwell and shut that control valve. Then and only then have you shut down the system water for the second floor. And that concludes the fire guard presentation of the fire sprinkler installation of Progression Place Residential. Mm -hmm.